Ready. Beautiful. Oh my God. Okay. We are live. Hello and welcome to Talk Shop. I'm one of your hosts, Reka. I'm your other host, Jordan. And today we have the very funny, talented improviser, comedian, filmmaker, John Purcell. Hey, well, how's it going? Oh my God. John, we're so excited to have you. What a treat. Happy to be here. Watch my first episode of Top Chef. Feeling good. We love it. And you said you liked it. I did. I really enjoyed it. Uh, as we were just talking about, the, I've kind of gotten into reality shows a little more recently. I never really watched them before. And the Bachelor franchise is kind of my main reference point right now. I used to watch Big Brother like way back in the day in the UK. Um, but um, but this is actually, I like it a lot more than it feels way less produced and like uh, fake, I guess, like manufactured, like the, we've like set this stuff up. It feels more, I don't wanna say like a documentary, a little bit actually at points though. Um, just like you're actually watching real things happen more, I yeah. think, which I like. I I think you're not far off. Top yeah. Chef kind of prides itself as being food first rather than like drama first, which I think is very unusual for a show that's on Bravo. Absolutely. Um, I would say that you, if you liked this for being authentic, you would really like the most recent seasons where there's almost no personal drama and it's a lot of just uh, yeah. even, people who like each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even this um, was like a little dramatic happens. compared yeah. to other seasons. Yeah. Yes. Because um, Dale has like anger issues in this season. Um, which yeah. Um, He's better now, though. He is better now. He's great. <laughs> he has been for years. I think yeah, he has before, been. No, I think that's super yeah. important to say. I think it's but... good to say he's definitely dealt with it. I've probably said this before, but I did used to work at a like sit down, but kind of funky, fun um, Mexican restaurant and bar down the street from his old restaurant, Tall Day. And he would come in and order takeout a lot from me. And he always tipped and was always nice to me, which was great because up until that point, I had only seen him be um, so scary on Top Chef. But mm -hmm. so real life, he's nice. He's nice on Top Chef, new season. So we cut him some slack. We love a man that goes to therapy. I think that's absolutely. Um, that's so you've both, you've been following his journey since like he's he that was his last appearance on the show or he's come back no he's come back oh, uh, okay okay he comes back four seasons from now in season eight okay. and he already chilled the fuck out which is yes. great and then in this last most recent season he's a, he's a recurring judge um and he, and he does a great job judging he's he's uh -huh. like light-hearted and fun yeah so you're like damn good good for you he, man yeah he definitely seemed to be going through something yes. <laughs> you know, from my perception, just coming in and just seeing this episode and having no context for him. Yes. Uh, even just from before I knew how it was going to end, he seemed in his, uh, in the kind of um, talking heads or whatever, uh, just like very, uh, I don't know, like emotionally shaken or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it, that obviously kind of ramped up as the, as the episode went on. Simply, yeah. absolutely. So actually, before we dive into all this, Let's get a couple little orders of business out of the way. First order of business, y'all know it. We're a food charity based live stream. This season, we have shaken it up just the slightest bit. And Rika, you're, you're big. My joke. My, John, I don't know. It usually does pretty well. I'll do it. Okay. Guys, first order of business, we're a food charity based live stream. And every season, we raise money for a different charity. And this season is no different. Just kidding. It is a little different. So you saw that it was a really funny joke. Uh, instead of talking about the charity every single episode and raising money, we're going to do a big fundraising thing at the end of the season. So stay tuned for that in just a couple of weeks. That was, yeah, sorry. I'm waiting for the, the laughter to die down in the chat. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, I also just want to interrupt and say, if anyone here has food-based charities um, that are in need, please feel free to DM us on Talk Chef. Instagram, we look at our DMs and we're always looking for good and different charities to promote and Absolutely. raise money for. So please let us know if you volunteer with or have heard of a place that's in great need currently. Yes, absolutely. We were particularly thinking of uh, things relating to Hurricane Ida, but we are open to anything and everything right now. Um, so that's our first little order of business. Second order of business is actually something we didn't tell you, John, which is that just like every episode of Top Chef has a quick fire, 
So does every episode of Talk Chef. Now it's not cooking related. It is mm-hmm. Dawn preference related. So okay. we're going to ask you 10 questions, but mm-hmm. the trick is you only have 45 seconds to answer. It's the quickest quick fire in Top Chef history. Okay, um, let's do it. Well, oh, I can tell you're into it, but just, just in case there's a part of you that's like, fuck these guys, I don't care. I'm going to half ass my way through this and then fucking <laughs> bounce, just in case that's sort of your attitude. Way you're uh, right now, yeah. Yeah, just in case you're kind of coming at us. Let me tell you that there's real prizes at stake here. Uh, so first off, you could win a deed to the Terlato Wine Vineyard. Now you may have saying, heard of it. Yeah, you might be saying, I've never heard of oh. that. That doesn't sound like wine. What is that? Who is that? All great questions. Terlato Wine sponsored between one and 2,000 seasons of Top Chef. Uh, their wine huh. no one's heard of. You can't buy it anywhere. We've tried. Tried. Oh. The guy who owns it, fucking Danny Tortellini Terlato, has been on Top Shop to advertise this vineyard. It's very much like seems like a corporation, kind of like, it, like they're just making sugar water here in giant bottles, like the smallest bottles, like fifty five thousand gallons. So you'll win a okay. deed to this sort of elusive wine vineyard, probably located in the Bermuda Triangle or some shit. We have no idea where it is. So that sounds incredible. It's really, really incredible. It's so incredible. So that's your first prize. Your second prize is going to be a buckle up. There's a second? There's a second. Do you believe? With two things. The second thing you could win is huh. your own suite of broken GE appliances, just like you see on the show. You even saw in this episode, someone's burner, someone's rice got taken off of a burner. You can get an oven that drops temperature, uh, a mandolin that breaks when you use it. So you slice your hand off, a fryer that drops temperature. All of these things could be yours. You could win a food truck where all the machinery inside breaks and explodes, just like what you see on the show. So there's prizes at stake here. You could win that. Yeah, and at 45 seconds? In the 45 seconds, that's about what those two prizes are worth. Uh, (laughs) Great. Great. So I will start the timer from the moment Jordan finishes asking question one. Are you ready? Ready to go. Okay. Should a team leader go home if the team fails? Yes. Should chefs wear fedoras? Yes. What do you order at a diner? Omelet. Restaurant wars, fair or unfair? Ah, fair. Is family style dining at a restaurant good? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where would you rather eat, my Buddha or warehouse kitchen? Uh, warehouse kitchen. Who is the problem, Lisa or Dale? Dale. Regular pub or gastro pub? Regular pub. What is worse, a conceptual error or a technical error? Conceptual. How great are Jordan and Reka? Wonderful, fantastic. <gasps> John. John, you did it. So few people do it and you did it. 41 seconds. You were you were so methodical. It was you graceful. Were like a sniper and it was so graceful. You just knew. You knew it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was really graceful. Congratulations. Thank you. It felt great. I'm looking forward to the deed and the other thing. Yeah, and the other ah, thing. That's awesome. Such a confidence. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and the two things. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. So let's let's get going here. Now, Jordan actually reminded me. So Restaurant Wars. Restaurant Wars, John, is a every season occurrence in Top Chef. When usually when there is eight people left, they will make them team up into two teams of four to create a restaurant in 24 hours with a full menu and a bunch of random guests and so mm-hmm. that don't uh, know how to to do anything or to like read. Yeah, servers that have never served at a restaurant before, seemingly people who have never been to a restaurant. To a restaurant. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's people were like, kept in a pod. Yeah, it, then- it, it, brought in from the pod for restaurant wars and then killed it, it is you, right exactly now. the comparison i was gonna make have you seen giraffes that have just been born that are learning how to walk and they don't know yes how, it's sort like of like stumbling that. around yeah. yeah yeah it's just kind of that in a person just people that are like table four i thought you said table 100 and you're like 
Yeah. Oh, they also Jesus. don't seem to have any kind of like um, life in their eyes or yeah. energy to do a good job. It feels like production really says something to them. It's They're very truly fun. like marionette people. They're yeah. like, I don't know where they're from. Uh, so that's what Restaurant Wars is. The food is always crazily unremarkable because they have so little time and they are mm. into doing things like decorating a restaurant, which is not a chef's job. Yeah. Um, this right. season had a wedding wars where they had to cater a wedding in like 36 hours. So I had forgotten they also had to do restaurant wars with only six people left. That's where they brought in those little extra helping hands to make it eight people. Yes. Um, they both designed their own restaurants uh, in 24 hours. Uh, they didn't really focus on the bad servers this time because I think there were really only three people on each team in any real yeah. time. Um, but yeah, so it's a controversial episode because food fans are like, the food is never good at Restaurant Wars. But competition hmm. fans, like, it's fun to watch people go crazy. Yes. This is always my least favorite episode of every single season. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting. What did you, as a Top Chef newbie, how did you feel about it? Um, I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting. I mean, it, uh, I did think it was weird that they, well, they got so much more money to like pay for decor than they did for food, which I guess maybe makes sense if you need to make a restaurant, you need to buy a ton of shit, like like tables and shit, but it would just felt weird that like, they must have, they must have also shopped for that for so much longer than the yes. food, and which you don't see. That's a great metaphor for what people take issue with with Restaurant Wars is like, yeah. why are these people who are trained as chefs asked to, to set up front of house in a restaurant as if those are relatable or related skills, really. Yes. And then also the yeah. judging is always very bizarre because then the judging is like, well, you were front of house, but did you make a dish? And and then it's like, oh yes, I made a dish, but like Lisa executed the dish that I started and conceptualized. And then that dish is bad. And then they're like, was well, that your fault or is that Lisa's fault? It's like very weird. Um, It's not like if you do front of house, you are discredited or not discredited, but like, not responsible for the food as well. It's very strange. Yes, it's very goofy. And we've got Rihanna in the chat, honestly putting our feet to the fire on the on the server smack talk because we don't really ever smack talk the servers a ton on the show. Um, that was just kind of like to give you a picture of like what these chefs are dealing with. Yeah. Um, Rihanna rightfully points out a lot of times the person assigned to front of house is sort of also grossly like underqualified for that job again not a job related mm -hmm. to being a chef so they're Absolutely. having to be like the host or whatever of the yeah. restaurant and seat people yeah. and kind of um set up a ticketing system and a, and a way for the whole flow of the front of the restaurant to go so it is their job to communicate to the servers and if they do a bad job then you see it on the in the servers being like i don't yeah. know you're going so that's a completely fair point you kind of miss all that in this particular episode yeah but normally that's a big focal point oh interesting I also yeah say i will say that i don't it, it i'm not saying it's the server's fault i do think it is a behind the scenes production ploy to get people who are not like professional servers i think it's part of especially in earlier seasons i don't think they do that as much now but in early seasons i think it's part of the added chaos Yes. And again, just a challenge that ultimately isn't entirely about um, cooking food. Um, yeah. So for this episode of Restaurant Wars, we get, uh, well, first we have a quick fire. And the quick fire was stupid. The quick fire is they go to a diner. It's not cooking, Reka. They sure. don't, they go to a diner and basically it's just like, can you hang at this busy diner? Spike says he hasn't cooked eggs in 10 years or something crazy. I'm like, yeah. that is absolutely sick in the head. You haven't cooked eggs? Yeah, okay. That seemed really weird to me as well. <laughs> and also that just, I guess it was more the pace that was the issue rather than what they were making, right? Because yes. the stuff they were making was pretty just, I mean, it was diner food, right? So, um, yes. Yes. and that's fair because like, if you've worked at a busy restaurant, especially in like, that looked to be like a brunch, like a, you know, mm -hmm. busy breakfast rush. Like it is insane. Yes. 
Uh, and I guess that is a, that's, you know, going back to like what you're saying about like being a host or being like a server is not part of the job. Like that is part of being a job. Uh, I've, I've been working in a kitchen, I guess. I've been able to kind of deal with that yeah. stress and the timing, even though it sucks, uh, yeah. but it's still part of it, I guess. And short order cook specifically, like, yeah. I mean, you see the chefs flail at it. It is like, hey, eggs over easy. You get like four people coming up to you saying all of these orders rapid fire that are all slightly different things, but are still different. You know, oh, you yeah. need to buy the sausage here. This needs bacon. These are over easy. Yeah. These are over medium, whatever. Uh, when so Stephanie yeah. can't find those eggs, those poached eggs in like the big oh, yeah. poached Nasty. eggs, I was like, this is the sickest thing I've, I love poached eggs, but me that too. made me rethink them. Me too. Me too. Even though like, I'm like logically like, I guess, why is that gross? There's no reason. It's just eggs in water that other eggs have been cooked in, but the way that it looked. Yeah, it looked disgusting. It looked like a bunch of little ghosts in there. Yeah, that's actually. Yeah, exactly that's, that's part of the issue with restaurants in general as someone who worked in a restaurant very very recently yeah uh, but but not currently um you don't really want to see in the restaurants in the back really of places you like uh because there's going to be something that happens that you'll be like oh i don't know if i want to come back here <laughs> so yeah. i think it's good to just uh i don't want to name where i worked but you know what i mean like it's uh uh just i don't know especially when like people are like underpaid, overworked, understaffed, whatever, like yes. they're, they might be taking shortcuts or doing stuff, not because they're yes. shitty workers in any way, it's because they're just fucking sick of it, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but as a customer, you might still then, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying that was going on here as well. This no, also no. might just be like a weird system of efficiency or something that are just like, I don't know, this is just totally. the way the dude who runs this, you know, thing normally does it. And that's just kind of the way it is. I, I think uh, a couple of people in the chat are, are, are saying something similar, Christina Rihanna and saying like, it was nice to sort of see these like hoity twitty chefs kind of put in the place of like people that are paid less uh, to do yeah. these really difficult jobs that uh, don't come with can't do. that, that big chefs, you know, they, they can't nail that timing the way these people can. And they are paid much less, I'm sure, and probably treated worse. Not that um, chefs are treated well anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone in the restaurant industry is treated well. Uh, but I think that's a really great point that like, yeah, this is really crazy work. Uh, and so people do take shortcuts and have to do all these things because yeah, they're not treated super well uh, and don't have the resources. I will say, I don't think the episode did a great job showing like who was kind of doing well at it and who wasn't really. Oh my God. Yeah. I, like I, I kind of, I guess I kind of knew that one of them was going to have one, but I was just kind of like, I don't know, they all kind of seem to be flailing yeah, a I guess bit, but also setting made... that box on fire meant she wasn't going to win. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> For but sure. like, I don't know. So Antonia yeah. ended up taking it. Uh, and as you said, we uh, kind of don't know, like, huh? I thought, I, which I love. Which I love. I, I love Antonia. Honestly, I, I think she's out the gate, one of the best people on the show. And John, because you just started watching The Bachelor. John. In the last season, when they do their hometown dates, and uh, are you familiar with hometown, John? Yeah, yeah. So the guy is like bringing over the woman to meet his family. He's like, "This is my sister, and this is one of my best friends, Antonia." And it's Antonia Lafaso from Shop, Top Chef, and we're all like, "Rick and I were like, ah! wait, w at which season did this? Which Bachelor this season? This is uh, fuck. was it like uh, recent Keisha. or?" Keisha? Oh, wait, I saw, I watched that season. Who, which, uh... So do you remember how Brendan, the fucking twerp in Bachelor in Paradise, self-eliminated after that weird challenge where they picked wedding rings? So yes. then he brought back Ben? Oh, I think we yes. called him, like, Burp or something in a previous episode. Ben? Yeah. Um, they brought back Ben. And yes. Ben was like, my sister saved my life. I had ideation feeling. I wanted to be oh, my wait. sister. And one of my best friends... Antonia. <laughs> oh, okay. This is ringing a bell. I did see this. I had no context for who this person was. Yes. And now, now you know she wins the bitter. <laughs> wow. So they love they love to cross uh oh my god, I call wish it, whatever they can. Yeah, I wish there was more top shop <laughs> that uh, cinematic uh, universe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um so Antonia takes the win and as her uh prize, she gets to pick her restaurant wars team. And she of course picks Stephanie and Blaze, 
because they all very much so, what she said, like they all have the same temperament. The other three people there are very up and down all the time. Yeah. Um, and Spike is a little weenie. So whatever. Although he's less of a weenie in this episode, I'll say. Spike was the gentleman with the hats. Um, who was like the one who set up the whole yes. place, right? And like was the, the server, like, I guess. Whatever, yeah. Fedora um, King. Um, yes. Yeah, so we get two restaurants. We get one that is sort of new American. Uh, and then we get one that is a Top Chef favorite Asian. Oh, it is fuck the, fuck ass. What the <laughs> fuck is Asian? <laughs> My favorite quote from this episode is something that Rekha and I scream all the time that no one on Top Chef ever talks about. They do this for the first, what, like eight seasons of Top Chef. Just be like, I cook Asian. There's soy sauce yeah. on and anything and that's Asia. Yeah. Um, but Anthony Bourdain's like, it's an Asian restaurant. Asia's big. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Anthony Bourdain is right. Asia is big. It's big. But it's so <laughs> funny that like that's how bad it is that when Anthony Bourdain said that, I was like, this is groundbreaking for the show. <laughs> it's really groundbreaking. For finally someone admits Asia is big. Asia Literally. Is big. Someone know someone on the show knows where Loxa comes from. Yeah. I'm like, this is huge. And that he was like, let me explain why Asia being big presents an issue. Exactly. Do you know yeah. how to you cook all Asian food well? Because also they were doing different types of Asian food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They called it time. Happy Buddha. My Buddha. My Buddha. was spelled M-A-I. I'm I, not sure. I, if that's offensive, someone pop it in the chat. I don't know. I, I, don't know but, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that is a word in another language well, like, i'm not sure if that's like a my tie right like that is a i don't know what it means though someone does google we, it let me google it yeah but um I, you know whatever and then of course their menu was very generically asian which is fine they're doing asian fusion blah 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 and they're all like we master asian food we love asian food da, 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 da. i'm like okay, okay what is asian food okay I'm seeing some different things. One thing says my in English means a sea of bitterness or drop of sea um, or like beloved. There's like a lot of things. I'm also seeing something that says in Vietnamese, it means um, it's a Vietnamese surname um, that means plum flower. These are just the first things coming up on Google. So I don't know how 100% correct they are, but I am, it was bizarre to me that they didn't explain their connection to the name and that word. Yeah, it really is absolutely fascinating. Um, it's really cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, Christine pointing out, being like, <laughs> this is Anthony Bourdain. He's eaten a lot of Asian food. As like, a, oh no, we better cook our Asian food well. It just, it's just goofy. It just sounds yeah. stupid. Doesn't it sound stupid when you say it? <laughs> what type of, what are you cooking? <laughs> Um, uh, crazy. I want to know really quickly, John, you're from Ireland. How do you feel the whole time I was watching this, knowing you were going to be our guest, how do you feel about a gastro pub? Because okay. I know I'm you sure voted pub over gastro. regular pubs in your life. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have gastro pubs like back home now as well. Like they're yeah. like a very like modern, you know, thing. Um, and some like older pubs have been kind of converted into gastro pubs, which can kind of suck sometimes. Um, yeah. I think they're fine. I mean, I, I uh, to me, I mean, this is jumping ahead a little bit maybe, but like the food that they serve didn't feel very like gastro pub to me. So, um, but no, in general, I think they're fine. I mean, I just, I don't know. I like regular pubs just cause they just feel very old and not like corporatized or, you know, um, yeah, just like a relic from a different time maybe they don't make them like they used to kind of thing yeah <laughs> um so but gastropubs are i don't i don't have a problem with them it's like they usually have pretty good food and they have lots of tv screens if you're looking to watch a sports game yeah. uh so what do yeah. you guys think of a gastro like because i know sports are the norm there but like we were friends of mine we were joking like what if we watched the bachelor and like a communal place to watch my garbage i think it could be nice 
Do you think? Yeah, I think it like the the it's one of those things like to watch sports in a pub. You don't need complete silence. You can have people like talking Uh and stuff, and you don't need to hear it. You just need to see like did they score or not or whatever. But like, I I do feel like for these things, you kind of want to have a respectful audience so you can kind of and then the commercial breaks you can. Yeah. You know, you can do your, you can chat, John, and you as can. As usual, you're right. Oh, right, John, you're 100. I feel, right. Well, I feel like they would have cracked it otherwise if this was possible. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm not sure. Possible. Was, uh, Bravo or not Bravo? Um, ABC would love to like open up like a bachelorette restaurant, fucking fuck hole somewhere. In yeah. Have you have you like done like I'm sure there's been like group watch parties of of like those well, types of shows, right? Reality shows. They, Top Chef. I know right now they've recently done a bunch for the the new L Word, the new season of the like new L Word. But all of them have to be sponsored by the network because if they're not, then you will get sued. Like Videology in Brooklyn, which I think maybe is now closed, used yes. to do a Game of Thrones screaming screening night, and then HBO was like, "We will sue you." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I guess yeah okay. <laughs> I guess that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, okay, so let's, let's dive in, shall we? All right, I got these dishes. Okay. And in my opinion, all the dishes are stupid. Oh, yeah, John. <laughs> so just to um, preempt, we usually do like a thumbs up, thumbs down on the dishes. Oh, perfect. Um, the criteria is as loose as you'd like it to be. Does it sound good? Does it sound like something a professional chef would make? Truly, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, so we'll do my Buddha first. For the first course, we have shrimp laksa. I mean, I guess I have to give it a thumbs down from what we heard about it, even though I like laksa. Yeah. I like yeah. smoke bomb. I mean, smoke, I like a little bit of smoke, but a little smoke goes such a long way. It Absolutely. really fucks up your palate if you have too much smoke. Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't one descriptor on the show of that that made it sound like it was that something that anyone would want to eat. So it's yeah. got to be a thumbs down for me. Also, you hear them all be like, I don't make locks like that. And it's like, but you were on the same team. So don't you have to like right. confer yeah. with each other a little bit? Yeah, I think it's very interesting because I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've never been to Malaysia or Singapore or anywhere where laksa is like prominent. But I, when I think of laksa, I don't think of it as smoky. That's not something that I like inherently think of. So I also thought that was interesting. But maybe uh, yeah. the one I had is different. I've never had laksa, but I have been to Malaysia and eaten Malaysian food. And I would not describe any of the food I ate as particularly smoky, as like a flavor profile, but. Hmm. Yeah, very strange. Um, okay, then we had pork and pickled plum potstickers. These slap, I love potstickers and I like the pickled plum. I love a pickled plum. They look great. They look really tasty. Someone yeah. mentioned, uh, what's the, I don't know all the names of people, but someone mentioned like the char on it. And I think they think yes, that was pretty uh, good. That was Ted Allen. He was like, you don't usually see that. And I was kind of like, you don't? Maybe. This was that also feel two, weird. 2009. Yeah, like, are you eating dumplings? Yeah, some, some, sometimes, sometimes they'll be like, wow, bacon. You don't see that. And you're like, oh, <laughs> oh. I guess, I oh. guess restaurants really do go through changes and evolution <laughs> yeah but it did make me feel like ted allen has never been to like a real chinese restaurant at this point in time mm-hmm. like if you ever had like a crispy bottom on a dumpling mm-hmm. um okay then for the second course we had these butterscotch miso scallops which continue on sale until the next season he's in this truly spoiler alert for four seasons from now um there is a challenge where they have to cook a dish where that eliminated them and Dale has to make this dish again. And he's like, I'm just gonna leave the butterscotch off. Like, yeah. It's so funny because then the judges are like, that's really smart. And everyone was like, that was an option? Like, yeah, that was a mistake. It's like he made chocolate tuna. And he's like, well, this time I decided to have the discretion to leave the chocolate off. Yeah. This was incredible because it wasn't bad. It's very, very wild. Okay, but those looked awful. Then the braised yeah. <laughs> short ribs. These looked fine. That looked good. The short the ribs. Short. It looked really yeah. like it was like a red block of like sauciness with like some like little vegetables around it. And did that get a good review? I don't really remember. It I remember them it serving it. Pretty good. Okay, I like short ribs. 
Okay, then right. we had hollow hollow for the dessert, which I love. I love hollow hollow. I'll say the color of it wasn't super, like that. Like it looked a little off, but looked good. I would delete it. Yes, and then we had the mango sticky rice, which I'm sorry, but I'm gonna give a thumbs down because I don't like mango sticky rice. I fucking love mango sticky rice, and I contend I still love mango sticky rice, and that wasn't mango sticky rice. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't look. Yeah. Because <laughs> they did fuck up the rice, right? I they mean, did. it was not. They absolutely it was did. like, yeah, yeah. They added like, good, mustard to it. <laughs> right. Like, good mango sticky rice is fucking. It's incredible. Great. Right. Yeah. But, and, um. And I, who am I to say I still wouldn't have eaten that? It is just mush, and I love mush. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not mango sticky rice. So. Yeah. Um. Okay, the next. Now we have Warehouse Kitchen, a name that I think is absolutely stupid. Um, I think that sounds like a place where you buy big plates. Yes. It's it's dumb. Um, okay, first course we have beet and goat cheese salad. And I'm going to give that one a fat thumbs down because I'm sorry if you're bringing a beet and goat cheese salad onto Top Chef. Thank you, next. I think I have a surprise for you, Jordan. <gasps> I thought you were being sarcastic about that. Wow, Rekha loves beets more than anything. But why? Do you agree with me? Yes, I think that's a stupid top chef dish. Rika's flirting with me. First <laughs> <laughs> time ever. Um, and they even liked it. They said it looked good. They said it they tasted like, really good. But I'm like, great. I get yeah, John. What do you think? I, I don't like beets, um, and also I just felt like this starting off for like a gastro pub was just like, come on. No. I I agree. Um, uh, I think. Uh, oh, sorry. Is this contentious for me to say I don't like? Yeah, beets? it's kind of fucked up. I had to put it in the chat. Um, I didn't want to confront you directly. <laughs> it's uh, fine. This is a safe space. Rika just loves beets more than anything in the entire world. But she wants to stand by her man. But yeah. <laughs> that's fair. But it's I respect okay. That. You know, yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, I, I respect, and I do ultimately think it is a stupid dish. For this is it, to me that exemplifies restaurant wars. It's like. I made a caprese sandwich that you find in the airport. It's like, You're like what? Okay. Yeah. yeah. What did you, what did you make? What did you think? What, what was in your brains yeah. when you thought about your menu? Absolutely. Um, yes. um, next for the first course is linguine and clams. And I'm going to give it a big chunky thumbs down because I think this does not fit. This doesn't make sense to me at all with a gastropub menu. I think I'm gonna give it a thumbs down because uh, I think that's a strange appetizer. Yes, I agree. Um, and literally every TV show I've ever seen where someone eats linguine and clams, they get food poisoning. That's true. That? And that's a good reason. Uh, that's the kind of criteria we use on talk show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. I don't like clams. And again, I just, this menu, or a gastro pub. I mean, maybe I don't fully actually know what a gastro pub is. Oh, no, 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 John. John. But I feel like I you do. do. You do. Right, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I knew I did. Um, yeah, I, 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 I feel like, I feel like a gastro pub, there's probably should be chicken wings like on the fucking, you know what I mean? Like, or, or like something with like mozzarella, something. I don't know. Like, Yes. Fucking... I think it has to be like bar food or it has to be yeah. like revamped British type food. I think you could have like an upscale, like some kind of pot pie or like bangers yes. and mash or, or whatever, like a funky play on a haggis, like something, something that like feels like it's from that part of the world where pubs are prominent. Or I agree with you in the other direction. It just has to be kind of like more elite bar food. Yeah. I feel yes. like you can make it where they're like gastropubs can be anything. I'm like, that's, I don't think no. I agree with that. I, no, I, think it's I, yeah. I, I Sorry, I wanted to just interrupt briefly. I was asked in the chat to show a picture. John, there's a popular picture of a banana that I, I have. Uh, I took a picture Isn't of it. Even related to what we're talking about. I know, I am sorry. It's just ran and asked for it. And it's like, Jordan, we have to appease our, our viewers. Otherwise, so mad. the lights aren't going to keep being on. Okay, so John, I. I will eat bananas that are very old and that's fine. So one time I had a banana that was particularly old and I, I it slid out onto a plate and it looks like this. Okay. 
Okay, it's just something that the fans like to see from time to time. So it had to so be. toxic. It is so toxic. Had to pull it up. Who asked for this? Shown- who asked for it's this? Right. That's the main <laughs> person who asked for no this. No one. Rega has shown real you, celebrities. Literally, I think if you control F, you'll that. see a bunch of people ask no. for it in the chat. Can't, I might have no. I might have gotten some text messages also to see it. So Rega has really- shown that picture to people who have one Top Chef. Yeah, and they said it looks great, it's, and I did an incredible job. It's so <laughs> sick. It's anyway. Every day we inch closer and closer to the end of our friendship. <laughs> I am sorry to interrupt the very interesting conversation on what constitutes a uh, pub and bachelor <laughs> food. I okay. think maybe that could constitute. No, canceled. Okay, we need to move on. <laughs> we need to get Rika out of here. Um, okay, then for Warehouse Kitchen for their second course, the first thing was trout with cauliflower. The trout was seared, skinned down, for anyone wondering. And um, I guess I'll give it a thumbs up. It looked fine. The judges weirdly made a big deal about the fact that the skin was on. And I'm like, was this a period in time when people weren't serving fish skin off? I don't know. And I got to say, I was worried about the cauliflower, but I'll take their word for it. I think people fuck up cauliflower. Yeah. John, what do you think? I don't like, no, I don't like it. Do you not like fish? No, I mean I don't eat fish anymore anyway. But um, yeah, uh, I used to really only eat like shrimp and prawn, mm-hmm. yeah, shrimp scallops, there. scallops yeah. sometimes. But mm. trout yeah. doesn't trout doesn't do it for me. If you like scallops, you'll love Richard Blaze's dessert later. So. Oh, oh, believe me, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> I was very excited. <laughs> and then we will get, or then the next thing in the second course is a lamb squared is what Richard called it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were going to say a lamb squared. <laughs> a lamb squared. Um, and it was lamb leg and lamb loin. I'm going to give this a thumbs down because I think duos are always bad unless it is like a comfy chicken with like crispy skin on top or something. That's the only way I'll accept it. I'll give it a thumbs down because I literally don't remember it. And I remember everything when I yeah. watch Once a Top Chef and I don't remember it. Wow. I don't remember it either, but I do like lamb. Uh, I'm going to give it a thumbs up because I feel like I've been giving a lot of thumbs down. <laughs> the criteria I'm going to use okay. for this one. But yeah, keep everyone thinking you're optimistic and positive. That's good. Yeah. Um. Okay. Now we're getting to what the people really want. The desserts from Warehouse Kitchen. First things first, they had a gorgonzola cheesecake that was savory. Thumbs up for me, queen. I love it. I would eat that. Yeah, looked looked, sounded great. Yeah. Ooh, I love. Okay, and then we had Richard Blaze's, also a dish that he brings back at some he's, point. He's made this earlier this season. He made that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, so he's already made this in this season, so that's kind of tired for me. But the presentation was wired. It was banana scallops where he took a banana and cut it into roughly the size of a scallop, seared it on both sides, served it with like a quenelle of chocolate mousse or whatever and something crunchy. It looks good, but I'm gonna have to give it a middle because I don't think you should be repeating ever on the show. I do think you shouldn't repeat and that being said, I will eat it. It looked good and I love banana desserts. I love banana desserts too. That's why I wanted to show you this banana job. Well, see, that actually did the opposite for me, uh, Rega, when I saw that. Thank you. It drove me away in some ways from the banana as a fruit. Okay, we'll have to do that. Um, so in the end, Warehouse Kitchen ends up winning, which makes sense. Can't dispute that. Yeah, Stephanie wins. She gets to go to Barcelona, which is awesome for her. Now, if we could just compare, if anyone watched episode 10, which we're not covering, but like, the prize for winning that episode was a bottle of wine and like a day trip to like the fucking wine hole where it was made. And we're just talking, we've talked a lot about like prize disparity on this show for like no reason. It's not like some challenge was particularly harder. I mean, I guess, we're yeah, harder, but it'll be like, you've won, um, uh, $25 to Crate and Barrel. And then someone be like, you win a 10 year stay to Italy all room and board paid for and like <laughs> it's just it's very crazy to me yeah, yeah that's nuts i mean yeah. you would be very pissed if you and so wait so every week there's prizes 
Yes, every episode. When you every think, episode. I, I don't. You Actually, know, I don't know if we can say that every. No, week not every not. episode, which is also shitty. Which then if you win a really, yeah, it's usually so. Sometimes, okay. Here's the range of prizes for winning an elimination challenge that could have taken you anywhere between three and forty-eight hours. You could win nothing. You could win a signed cookbook from the person sitting at the judges' table. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, a cookbook for a chef who probably was like, I don't need a cookbook from you. You could win a bottle of wine that tastes bad. And you could win like, an, you could win an opportunity to work for free somewhere, which is called staging. Called staging. They act like it's a huge deal, but it's very funny. It you is. are very much working for free somewhere. Oh no. Uh, they call it staging? Yeah, it'll be like, you get to stage. It's like a thing in the culinary world you get to stage at La Bernadette or whatever the fuck it's very it's- prestigious you just like go you cook you work for free you get to work kind of like hand in hand with the you know the the big wigs but also you like might have to do anything else um and a lot of times a lot of people stage either in other countries yeah, like France or something or at like world-renowned restaurants yeah like a Spago kind of shit or whatever Oh, okay. And stage, are we spelling that like stage? Just we're pronouncing it like, or no, is it? I, That's think, a good question. I think it is spelled like stage, but it is pronounced stage. Oh yeah. my God, I'm Googling today. Today I, I'm Googling. Um, yeah, yeah, so you win an opportunity to work for free in another country, and then you'll win like a vacation. Like one time someone won a tickets to the Olympics, uh, which then didn't, uh, because Stephanie, right? Stephanie won tickets to the Olympics. So. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So like, it's or like the tickets to the Super Bowl, and then someone wins like a fucking bottle of juice or whatever. So yeah. the prices are very different. That's a bummer. Yeah. Ooh, is that from um, what's the place in Burbank? Uh, it is Gus's Fried Chicken. Uh, Almost yeah, that's... all of the cups in my house are from this place. <laughs> yeah, we have a couple of those too. They're fucking uh, sweet tea. Is like so good. I don't eat meat anymore though, so I really don't know what else to go there for. Like they don't really have, right? I mean, are you veg or vegan? Uh, veg. If you they're want- mac and cheese. Oh, that's they're true. Potato salad. Their fried pickles. Their fried green tomatoes and their pies. Their oh chest yeah. Pie and their chocolate chest pie. Oh, so that's maybe you gotta go do. Just get a couple sides and then get some pie and some sweet tea. Yeah, and they do the sides in all here. different like sizes too. So you can get like a big, that, cause my roommate doesn't eat any meat and that's what he does when we go there. He just gets like a fat mac and cheese, some pie, a sweet tea, it's great. Okay, okay, now we're talking. This is good, I've got a plan. Um, um, incredible. Okay, and then we go to elimination and everyone starts, it's Spike, Lisa, and Dale. Everyone immediately starts throwing each other under the bus to be yeah. expected because these oh. are the most toxic people this season. Okay, so I had no context for that, but other than just when it it seemed like they were the rejects when, you know, when they like were choosing the teams. But um, yeah, there was like so much like uh, abdication of responsibility going on on that. See, like no one wanted to be like, well, I didn't choose that or well, they, or it was just like, so yeah, totally throwing each other under the bus. Like, well, such... you didn't use my recipes. You're all on the same fucking team. You gotta be sharing this oh. because otherwise if your team is on the bottom, you could go home. If your team. Yeah, there was, <laughs> it was really, it, it, it was like, that was the only, um, that was a very fun, pleasant watch for most of the show. You know, like it, it doesn't get like super tense at any points and they don't do that thing that reality shows do where they like, do the thing of like, and the person who's going home, you know, like, and you have to wait five seconds before they say it. They just like get it out and say who's leaving. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, I forget what I was saying. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. You were Something. saying you appreciated that they get through it. Uh, the, we were talking about, they were the three most unhinged people throwing each other on the bus, abdication of responsibility. Um, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Gus's and get mac and cheese. And Hell yeah. yeah. Um, I will say that it's so hard on this show and Rekha and I talk about this a lot, but it's like, if you stand up for your dish, they're like, okay, you can't take a note. If you don't stand up for your dish, they're like, stand up for your dish, bitch. 
if you're like, well, I made this and I made, and you made this, then they're like, okay, you didn't work as a team. But if they're like, well, who made the fish? And you go, we all made the fish. They go, oh, you all made the fish. fish. Three people can't make a fish. It's not possible. Yeah. So there literally is no winning. And we've had Top Chef contestants like admit that. But like, sometimes they ask you questions like that, that no matter what you say, it's going to be wrong. So you just have to kind of- Yeah. Kind of eat shit. (laughs) Oh, I remember what I was going to say, just that that was the only moment in the episode where I felt like it was hard to watch. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, kind of just like awkward and like three people just like genuinely fighting, like genuinely not like, like when he, when Dale leaves, uh, he kind of just gives a bit of a gesture to uh, what's, what's uh, the He's other person? Yeah. And like, she doesn't like look at him. It seems pretty like there's yes. pretty bad blood <laughs> for sure. Absolutely, um, absolutely. I uh, I think it's hard because I don't think Dale should have gone home. I think he was a stronger chef than either of the two of them, but I hmm. think yeah, when you're when you're the team lead, I think a lot of the heat is on you. Absolutely. And Dale has a habit of being like nobody's listening to me. I'll do it all myself and it'll be like I don't think nobody was not listening to you. Maybe in this instance, nobody was listening to each other, but Dale will have that kind of attitude of the person that organizes the group trip that nobody asked him to organize and then gets mad that he had to organize all of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like no one asked no one asked you to do this all by yourself. You could yes. just like yes. have a meeting and say, look, we need to communicate better or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, it was, it was uh, interesting. So he, you were both saying that he has he had like some anger kind of oh, stuff going on at that time yeah but he's, time. now he's a little you know he's he acknowledges it in a later season he's like yeah i was a different person and i'm like better now which is great Good for him yeah yeah um yeah. and he seems he seems so much better um john are i don't know if you enjoy cooking but we usually ask our guests what they would have made for this challenge now granted this is restaurant wars and like what restaurant them. what type of restaurant would i would have, op- would yeah, I have opened what type of restaurant would you have opened that's a good question and um, what would you have named it what would i have named it yeah oh no um okay well the garage warehouse yeah <laughs> <laughs> god like what type of cuisine i mean i guess i oh god um i would open a uh okay i would open a uh a vegan diner <gasps> fun yes so it'd be just like your like regular diner menu you can get like all omelets and like every thing that you can get at a diner sausage yeah. whatever in an omelet you can get like a vegan non-meat version of it um yeah. and what would i call it Oh, I don't know. What's like a, uh... Reka, you're amazing at puns. I feel like you, oh, yeah. like a vegan uh, diner. Come on. What's like the, what's, what's, um, I shouldn't have taken an edible before I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, I literally just told someone yesterday. I'm like, I'm out of the punning game. I don't have them anymore. They're gone out of my brain. That part of my brain died. Hey, yeah. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? You lose yeah. it. That's what they say about punning specifically is the thing. Restaurants with meat in the title. This is how I would normally go about this. Well, you know, so weird. I was in Chicago. Mom and I went to Chicago for our honeymoon. We went to a couple of places in uh-huh. Chicago. And we, we went to, I don't know if it was a vegan diner. We went to a vegetarian diner that's apparently yeah. really old in Chicago. It's been around for like a really, really long time. And it's just called the Chicago Diner, I think. Um, oh, but it's like, yeah. but it's fully vegetarian. And like nothing about yeah, the name that. clues you into it's that, kind of which cool. in some ways I like because I don't, you know, yeah. when every vegan place like has to have a thing that tells you that yeah, it's they're vegan. Yeah, they're called like no moo moo. Or yeah. <laughs> I, I just feel like, oh and God, can we just like. To go there. Yeah, I know. Um, but um, so I kind of appreciate. I'll call your diner no moo moo. Yeah. Yes. Well, that that would work for that, I think. Uh, Incredible. Um, 
cool. Well, I don't know. Do we have any other resounding thoughts for this episode? I feel like I talked a lot. I got them all out. Yeah. John? Is Anthony Bourdain always on that show? No. He's a recurring guest judge. He's a recurring judge. Yeah. Um, So he'll come back once in a while. And he's like a big part, part of the Top Chef family and be like, I think they did like a little dedication to him when he passed. And, and yeah, and they do like uh, on the anniversary of his passing, they like, you know, will post something. I think he's friends with a lot of them too. I think him and Pat were good friends. I'm sure he and Tom like knew each other. Exactly. Hmm. Um, cool. Well, John, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, where do people find more of your stuff? Uh, people could uh, go to my website. It's uh, jpersil.org, O-R-G. So my name is that dot B-O-H-N. org? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why I chose that, but that's my website. Come on. Well, and I, I did recently update it, so there's, there's and things to John see. John has a short film that is currently out and is in our description of the video if you want to check it out. It looks Ooh, yeah. beautiful. It's very fun. It's called Some Very, Very Upsetting News. It's got some really cool people, Amon, Megan, it's great. Ethan Hawk, can I spoil? Um, <laughs> is in the yeah, movie. thank you. Yeah, check it out. It's on, uh, that's on my website. If Hell you yeah. Wanna watch it. Um, uh, and he has a very funny uh, web series called Business Work that you should check out. I think there's a couple episodes of that on my website too. I just recently redid my website, so it's got all my yeah. stuff on there. You know, I was told I had to do that. Yes, absolutely. And John has, a, John's an incredible filmmaker and a very funny person. And I would recommend you follow him on social media as well so you can keep up with what he's doing. And if you like tie dye and ice dye shirts, you're going to want to follow John for that too. So, oh, yeah, that. yeah, you can go. Let me, um, oh, yeah, pop that in the chat. Drop oh, it in the chat. Find it. Drop it and pop it. It's okay. just, okay. Amy says, John, your short film is very, very good. Oh, thank you, Amy or um, Amy Lee. Okay, Thank you wonderful. so much. That's uh, business work. I, I come, I'm logged in on the business work account. That's me. Absolutely fine. Uh, um, yes, uh, that's the 40 foot is that that's where I um, post the sh- show shirts and stuff I make. I'm going to be. Yeah, and they're beautiful. They're great shirts. Sure. Thank you so fine. much. Um, well, John, oh, what's that? Oh my God, a Bravo producer is telling me. Wow, I can tell him. Okay. John, this Bravo producer in my room is telling me you are top shot. Yes. Yes. That's incredible. I know a lot of people don't know this, but there are two ways to become a top chef. Number one is to compete on the Bravo reality show. Top I figured chef. that was the only way. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this. This is a life hack. The other one is to be on Reka and I's live stream YouTube visual podcast for charity talk chef. Once. Once. Just one time. That's all you have to do. You do, you're on it, you do a good job, you're in. Either way. Thank you. An Indian woman will tell you you are top chef. And that's what's kind of beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to go tell my wife now. She won't know what I'm talking about. but Absolutely. It's she'll really... be she'll be happy for me. I know she'll yeah, be yeah, happy for me. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's so. supportive. <laughs> yeah, have her text us and we can explain it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I will. I'll just say, text right again, Jordan. Yeah, they yeah, have yeah. some stuff to explain. <laughs> They have news. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, have, they news. have some news. Uh, well, thank you so much, John. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and come back next week for another episode.